Hello hardware fanatics, Jacob here, and this week saw Nvidia release a new game ready driver package, 425.31, to allow most Pascal 10 series and 16 series GPUs enable Microsoft DirectX ray tracing, or DXR. The move came as a bit of a surprise considering Nvidia's RTX platform has previously been platform locked to its recently launched 20 series GPUs, and it also raised questions of performance on the lower spec cards, or lack thereof. After all, can a GTX 1060 6GB really ray trace? Ray tracing has been referred to by many as the holy grail of graphics rendering. The tech has actually been around for decades, lying in wait for capable silicon, and eventually finding its first break in the professional rendering scene. It wasn't until Nvidia's RTX 20 series generation, announced in Q3 2018, that this tech was implemented in real time within games emboldened by dedicated silicon in the form of RT cores. These RT cores are the reason Nvidia's RTX 20 series GPUs can drive such a computationally mammoth quantity of rays around a scene. Nvidia's RTX 2080 Ti is capable of 10 giga rays per second, while the GTX 1080 Ti can barely match a fraction of that at just 1.1 giga rays per second. That's a huge deficit, and one that has barred anything but the best Nvidia Turing GPUs from the gaming holy grail. But just one month ago, Nvidia decided to open up DXR driver support for most of its 10 series, and both the GTX 1660 Ti and GTX 1660, two cards built upon the Turing architecture's foundations uh, sans RT cores. This support extends to both desktop and mobile variants of these GPUs, and according to Nvidia, entry-level cards will not be supported due to CUDA and VRAM limitations. And Nvidia feels justified in its decision to unleash DXR on Pascal, intent on casting a wider net amongst gamers and enticing greater numbers of wild devs in the process. But Nvidia hastens to add that overall DXR performance all depends on any given game's implementation of ray tracing. Nvidia's director of GeForce Desktop, Justin Walker, breaks today's ray tracing into four implementations, ambient occlusion, shadows, reflections, and global illumination. Each of these workloads necessitates different processes and techniques, some may require a GPU to compute a large number of rays and complex bounce paths, while others are far more localized, low-impact effects. This is key to the in-game performance disparity between graphics cards able to offload these highly demanding workloads, such as the RTX 20 series, to cards that cannot, like the GTX 10 series and 16 series. So to test this hypothesis, I've put the GTX 1060, GTX 1660, and RTX 2060 three generations of Nvidia's mainstream graphics cards, through a benchmarking suite of suitably ray traced games to see how cards lacking RT cores shape up against the real thing, and to see how much of an impact each ray tracing implementation has on performance. Ambient occlusion is an effect often used in games to realistically darken areas that light should be physically unable to reach due to nearby objects. The localized nature of this effect allows it to be fairly low demand, while it requires many rays, it does so in a very small area. These short rays are less computationally intensive, and as such, should have the least impact on Pascal graphics cards. An applicable benchmark would be the Reflections demo, which makes good use of ray-traced ambient occlusion. However, while the ambient occlusion within the scene is low impact, it is complemented by complex reflections, bouncing between many surfaces. As a result, Pascal struggles mightily, managing to reach only single-digit FPS on average. So ambient occlusion may be one use for ray tracing that Pascal can just about handle, although it's not the most visually exciting use for DXR either. By tracing the path of light in a scene and how it interacts with objects, realistic shadowing can be achieved in a way previously impossible with pre-baked lighting. And while that might be mighty expensive for a GPU to compute, there's a silver lining for Pascal perhaps. It all comes down to game devs, as the performance impact of ray trace lighting is dependent on the quantity and form of lighting employed within the game world. If you reduce the number of lights in a scene, or how many will affect a shadow, you can dramatically reduce the amount of rays required to render that scene in real time. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is your best bet for acceptable performance within today's limited DXR enabled library. It utilizes ray tracing on shadows alone, and the granularity within the settings menu means even a GTX 1060 can handle the heat. But such Pascal friendly shadows are also fairly tough to spot, so you might find yourself turning DXR back off to eke out lower frame times instead. 
ray trace reflections can be hugely detrimental to frame rates in game, as evidenced by Battlefield 5's performance at launch. At first, DICE was attempting to utilize ray tracing across every surface, a very computationally intensive task. However, working with Nvidia, DICE came up with a solution. Rather than bounce rays off of every surface in game, it would only attempt to do so with those that were particularly shiny or reflective, such as puddles, windows, or metal. The result is something considerably less demanding. A Battlefield 5 scene is rated on areas that require ray tracing and those that don't, and this approach could be implemented further into games to lessen the load on traditional GPU silicon in the absence of RT cores. Sci-Fi FPS Atomic Heart makes for a perfect counterpoint to the low impact reflections of Battlefield 5. It utilizes far more complex reflections, bouncing them back off one another to add more realism and depth to a scene. However, this kills the Pascal GPU. There is something to be said about the GTX 1660's performance, however. Sure, it's still total garbage for gaming, but the optimizations within the Turing architecture, such as concurrent execution, allow the GTX 1660 to nearly double the GTX 1060's score. The most demanding of all is global illumination, and it's kind of in the name. Whereas most techniques can be localized in one way or another, global illumination is very much everywhere, all the time, and super expensive to render. Each ray is responsible for shading a pixel based on its surrounding geometry and lighting, creating a variable and realistically lit scene. However, the quantity of rays necessary for operation is enormous, with every pixel necessitating a single ray bouncing around the scene at the very least. Global illumination is often pre-baked into a title, offloading the job of rendering a scene away from the client PC. However, the resulting scene is static and unable to react to the environment around it. To achieve that, you have to be prepared to spend precious GPU resources, ideally concurrently with dedicated silicon. As you can see in Metro Exodus, all those rays prove too great for Pascal to handle. Even Turing's optimizations offer no tangible benefit to the GTX 1660's performance, with both cards struggling to hit 20 FPS. Of the four implementations, Pascal is able to manage just a few, and they're considerably toned down at that. There's at least a modicum of performance to be had in Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Battlefield 5, but only with minimal ray tracing enabled. And while there may be a glimmer of hope for low impact granular DXR going forward, you also don't want to tone down your graphics settings too greatly to reach playable frame rates with ray tracing enabled. Without dedicated silicon, it's high impact and most effects are expensive to render. Ray tracing is also one of those graphics enhancements that is often realistic enough that your brain ignores it completely once you're immersed in gameplay. But what is noticeable is switching your graphics settings from ultra to medium or low, and ray tracing just isn't worth the loss in fidelity and quality when it comes at the expense of conventional performance. And without tensor cores on the die, Nvidia's neural network loses all of its smarts. As such, even DLSS can't come to the rescue of Pascal GTX cards as it does the RTX 20 series. So can you use ray tracing on a GTX 1060? No, or at least you shouldn't. The cost of ray tracing is just too dear and you're better off utilizing your limited processing might elsewhere in the process. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video enough to give it a thumbs up and maybe show PC Games N a little love and subscribe while you're there too. Also check back on PCGamesN.com for a deluge of news, reviews, and spicy takes, including more from me, my compadre Dave, and the rest of the team. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.